Are we all in, do we think? I've been watching those numbers climb up to 40. Are we, is that everybody out of the green room and into the, into the big room? Fantastic. Tēnā koutou katoa, no mai, haere mai ki tēnei, hui whakahira hira i te pōne. Welcome everybody, it's so good to see so many of you here. It's It's been, I know, a really full day uh, with Lianza, and some of you will have not been maybe at Lianza today. Fantastic to have you here. This is totally something that we should be celebrating, the launch of this new book published by NZC uh, Press. Literacy Across the Divide, information literacy as the key to student transition. So we are going to meet the three member team, three members of the team that put this book together. They will give us a short introduction to the book and then we're going to open the floor for your questions. Also as a bonus treat, I want all of you who are joining us tonight, you are all automatically going into the draw to win a copy of the book. All you need to do is put your email and name into the chat so that we know how to be in touch with you. So let me right now welcome the three fabulous women, Lisa Emerson, Senga White, and Catherine Doughty. Look at you all, beautiful. Love it. Lisa was one of the leads of the research that underpins this book and its co-editor, Senga and Catherine, who will both be, I think, quite well known to many of the Lianza people here. They were also part of the research team and have written chapters. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hand over to Lisa. In a little while, I will ask some questions. But I also want you, lovely people, to throw your questions into the chat function as well. But right now, handing over to Lisa. Thanks, Michelle. Kia ora tato. Um, it is really lovely to have you here um, for the launch of this book. Um, and I wanted to say that it's a very special thing for us to be launching this book at this conference. Um, we have shared our work as it has progressed. And so now we get to share all the findings and experience of our research um, as we launch our book here. So thank you for having us. This is a really special time and place for us. Um, so the book is based on two um, projects that were funded by the TLRI. The first one was a two year project on um, academic literacy in the transition from high school to um, to higher education. And the second was a three year project which focused on information literacy spaces and in particular on teacher and librarian collaborations. And so what we've aimed to do is bring these two projects together in this book and look at the question of how can we support students in the transition to higher education by weaving information literacy and the work of our wonderful librarians into disciplinary learning in both the senior secondary school and then the first year of higher education. So the, the book and the work itself was a labour of love in so many ways and it involved a cast of hundreds if not more. Um, so our research team included researchers and teachers and librarians from both sectors. We had I think in both projects 11 schools ranging from Southland right up to the Bay of Islands. We had four tertiary institutions, two polytechnics, two universities and then within each of these schools and institutions we had multiple case studies happening that involved many teachers librarians and of course our students so it really was a huge um, undertaking um, with many people giving their time and their passion and their energy to this um, so we have many people to thank and I really want to start here um, first of all a huge shout out to our amazing teachers and librarians who worked so hard and were so prepared to let us into their classrooms or their libraries and to change often long established, uh, well established practice. Um, we would like to thank the NZCR Press and David Ellis in particular who had faith in us and guided us through the process of writing this book. The TLRI staff were amazing, they were so supportive and so patient with our many headed beast of a research project. And I want to say a special word of thanks to Dr. Rose Hipkins. She was our mentor and our friend and supported us in so many ways. And she had a critical role to play in the formation of this book. She worked with our teachers and librarians to write the chapters well, where they tell their story of um, of being engaged with this research. 
Finally, I'd like to acknowledge the skill and dedication of our project team. Everyone brought different skills and different knowledge to the team, but the same passion. Um, and I wish I could introduce you to all of them here. Um, but uh, I, I just want to acknowledge them and say that it was a joy and a privilege to work with them all. Um, and in particular, I would like to mention Heather Lamont, to whom this book is dedicated. And I know many of you will have known Heather. She was um, our dear friend and our colleague, and she sadly died before we could put this book in her hands. Um, she was the linchpin of our research team. She was our project manager who gently but firmly ensured that everything happened more or less when it was supposed to. And her knowledge of university libraries and her deep emotion in the scholarship of information literacy is woven through this project and through this book. So I'd just like to acknowledge Heather along with the research team. Before I hand you over to Senga, who's going to tell you about her experience of the project, I just want to have a word about how to deploy this book, if you like. So the main thing I want to say is that while this book is based on solid scholarship, it is deliberately written not to be a standard academic book. It's a practical book. It's a book full of resources and practical personal experience by teachers and librarians. It is written by and for librarians and teachers. And each of the chapters is a short, a short um, description or discussion of, from the perspective of someone or a group of people who were engaged in the project. So it is designed to break down the barriers um, that we experienced, uh, that, that we know many librarians experience in their, in their work. Catherine, could you put on the next slide, um, which tells you, this is one of the quotes from one of our librarians. Um, and this is what this book hopes to address. I'll just give you a moment to read it. So there are two things that are important. We want to give weight to the place of information literacy in the curriculum in both sectors. And we want this book to provide heft in supporting the role of librarians as information literacy experts with a vital role to play in the classroom. So what we would love is for this book to be planted in every staff room of every secondary school so that unsuspecting teachers might pick it up um, during their lunch break and skim through a chapter. We hope this is a book university or polytechnic librarians could hand to an academic staff member and say, take a look at this chapter. This is something that we could do. We hope this is a book that a librarian could hand to their principal or to their provost and say, take a look at this section. Um, we really could do this. So this is a book to be used and a book that we really hope you will use. And now I'll hand over to Senga. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, so, yeah, this, this project has been a transformational for me, that's that's for sure. Um, and I could talk for hours about my experience um, and the wonderful things that I got out of this. But um, I wanted to focus um, particularly on the teacher-librarian collaboration, uh, which was a, a significant part of our research. Um, I don't need to tell any of you guys here that libraries are amazing spaces for wondering and learning, discovering, inquiring and questioning, but also for collaborating. Um, librarians are natural collaborators, um, but how do we transfer our skills and knowledge to partner with teaching colleagues? Um, we knew from the extensive international literature, plus there were small pockets of national evidence, that when school librarians are working in the right environments, they have a positive impact on student learning. Our own research corroborated this, uh, and our participating teachers and librarians described their experiences throughout this book, and those chapters were very fittingly written collaboratively. Um, in the first year of our research, um, as we were developing our action research partnerships, we surveyed the teachers and librarians around the country to establish a benchmark for understanding the attitudes and beliefs in New Zealand around the school library and librarians. We asked two main questions of each group. So thinking about how you work with either teacher or librarian, depending on which one you were at your school, what are the things that currently work well 
and what factors support these successes and what are the areas for improvement and what barriers make it harder for those improvements. And if you could just pop over to the next screen, thanks, Catherine. So these surveys actually showed that teachers and librarians view library success differently. Librarians focused almost entirely on communication, uh, building relationships and that professional trust. Teachers, on the other hand, focused mainly on the physical resourcing, so i.e. the library itself or the books, and they described their librarian colleagues as helpful support rather than collaborative peer. Uh, much of the literature on collaboration focuses on the enablers and barriers to teacher librarian collaboration. However, we chose to focus on factors, the factors and conditions that could shift practice. So we adapted the Montiel overall model of collaboration as a way of recognizing and measuring how our partnerships developed and what interactions and indicators had the most effect. Um, so Patricia Montiel um, overall defines collaboration as two or more individuals working together to integrate information in order to enhance learning. And her model shows the progression possible from types one and two um, and moving towards a more shared or even integrated approach um, to these partnerships. So currently in New Zealand schools, most collaborations tend to be in the type one or two coordination boxes. They're either siloed or they're as needed. Um, but what our research shows is that through these partnerships, a shared or even integrated collaborative approach can be achieved. Our teacher partners reported through their, their work with their librarian colleagues that they saw more student engagement with assessment tasks, better critical thinking, improved engagement with information, and many of these students actually raised their success rates for NCEA. Can you pop onto the next screen, Catherine? While librarians are more likely to initiate, uh, sorry, um, a summary of our findings about the collaboration uh, that we go into in more detail in our book is that while collaborations, um, librarians are more likely to initiate collaboration, teacher attitude is what is crucial to the success. If teachers initiate partnerships, shared or integrated collaboration is more likely to be the result and it's more likely to be sustained. And really crucially, change is possible when teachers and school leaders become champions of their library. That's such an important uh, thing to consider. So on to our next slide. Thanks, Catherine. Um, for public librarians whose connection to education might not be as defined or seem as relevant, there are some strong reasons to consider working alongside others in libraries and even going beyond um, our sector. So it was really exciting yesterday to hear talk about our Glamour Sector Hui um, in February next year. Uh, I think there's some really exciting work that can be done in that space. Um, I think for a wider education lens, I like, or collaboration lens, I like Gray's definition of collaboration. Partners who see different aspects of a problem can constructively explore their differences and see, search for solutions that go beyond their own limited vision of what's possible. And this is what aligns the idea of communities of practice. And we have a chapter about this in Literacy Across the Divide. Learning in all its forms, lifelong, life-wide, formal, informal, intergenerational, is the lifeblood of our communities. So as this project was coming to an end in 2019, and after 20 years of working in schools, I moved to a public, to the public library sector. And I began to see all the possibilities for de developing this collaborative approach in my new context. Mm -hmm. So still focusing on education, but from a much wider perspective. So without doubt, information literacy skills are crucial for our secondary and tertiary students, but they also are very much needed throughout our lives in many of our everyday contexts. Uh, it's a foundational learning, critical thinking skill. So there is something for all librarians, regardless of the sector, in literacy across the divide. I'm going to hand over to Catherine, who's going to share her experiences in the tertiary sector. Tina koutou katoa, ko Catherine, aho. I am going to briefly tell you about what I learned from our mini project at the Polytech. I was part of um, a partnership. I was the health librarian and I worked with Roz Leahy, the Diploma of Enrolled Nursing Tutor and her class. The mini project allowed Roz and I to critically reflect on our collaborative teaching. We knew working together was the best practice approach where she was the expert um, 
content expert and I was, um, information literacy was my specialism. For several years, we had partnered to develop student information literacy skills in the context of their subject. Learning and building it into several staged points throughout the diploma, rather than just having a one-off shot session. But this time round, we had time to build on current practice and to focus on what was not also what wasn't working so well. So this was really new and different. We were also gifted with the input of the fabulous um, Angela Fikri, who I know here's to, is here tonight online, um, who is an IL scholar and Massey academic, and whose input greatly impacted our mini project and the overarching research project as a whole. So let's talk about what we learned. Firstly, we found that we could go we could better engage our students if we changed our language and align the IL sessions with their nursing work. So rather than call them library sessions, they became a series of best practice nursing information skills sessions. We could sneak in IL under the radar and doing library stuff wasn't seen as separate or extra work. We also dug deeper and identified our biggest hurdle there had been a mismatch between the assignment description or assignment question and the sources available in the scholarly journal database. Students were not finding relevant journal articles that they could actually understand. Therefore, they weren't developing confidence with databases and journals, and many didn't use them in their assignments. I learned what effective scaffolding actually looks like from right at the planning stage. Understanding our issue meant that I could prescribe a short list of nursing journals written at the student's level to limit their searching by. This experience showed me how tutors and librarians can come together and work together to plan assignments beforehand and support student learning outcomes through that process. I learned that activity-based learning helps to cement the learning of IL concepts. We plan for formative learning opportunities to let students show they know about keyword searching, search strategies, and APA referencing. We also utilize the Are You Ready assessment, self-assessment tool. This was created by Angela to help students transition from secondary to tertiary education it allowed students to assess the IL skill levels at the beginning of the course and set their own personal IL goals. We were absolutely thrilled with the results of our mini project. All the students used journal articles and books and chapters and they all acknowledged their sources. For me, this was an opportunity to work quite differently. I felt I had a greater commitment to the teaching and learning process. I felt like I was a professional on an equal footing with the teaching staff. My skills were being valued and I could see that they did indeed contribute to student learning. It was possibly the most influential opportunity for professional development in my career. I want to quickly mention in my, experience, my experience with an IL tool that was developed from one of the mini projects at Massey University. I had always wanted to find successful strategies on teaching how to evaluate and select information. The limited time I had with students was often a barrier and my teaching emphasis necessarily lay more heavily on finding information with search tools versus evaluation. So the Rauru Whakarare Evaluation Framework created by Angela Fikri and Massey librarian Carla Fikri has become my go-to resource. It works on so many levels, beginning with engaging us with the Te Reo Māori informed concepts, whakapapa, the background of the source, orangahanga, its origins, maramatanga, its content, aronga, the writer's lens, and mana, the, author of, the authority of the author. It is a more holistic tool than other information evaluation tools that take a linear sort of a tick box approach. 
This frame goes further and it is applicable to all subject areas and levels of learning. I have introduced this framework. I introduced it to first year Bachelor of Nursing Māori students at Whitirea. And for the past two years, I have shared it with academics and law students at Victoria University, where teaching and assessing source elevation evaluation has become embedded in the first first year law paper. And we are incorporating it into the research process of our master's students. Namahi. Thank you, Catherine. I, um, I just want to reiterate what a, uh, an amazing process this has been of going through this um, research project and working with an astonishing group of people. And I think that what we've written is something that will be of value to a wide range of people. We hope it will be of value to this community. Um, and we really appreciate um, everybody who has contributed and taken an interest in our work. And the last thing to say is please buy the book. Fantastic. So thank you to the three of you so much, Lisa, Senga and Catherine. I can see what an impact this book has had on all three of you. It's really, um, it's palpable. And I can also see from what you've said the impact that this can have on students and teachers and lecturers so this is incredibly exciting um in a moment i'm going to open up the floor as it were or the chat function to your questions so please i do want to hear from you but let me start i'm going to start by asking you singer you're really familiar with the challenges that librarians face in schools what do you think is one important thing, a resource or an idea that is discussed in this book that would be really helpful for school librarians to know? I think that there's so, there's so many things, but I think that um, one of the biggest things that I've learned um, over the course of this um, for a whole variety of reasons is that it's about making the invisible visible. Um, we're, we're very good at sharing with each other. We, we, it's wonderful. We have so many kindred spirits and it's, it's like, it's like coming home when you talk to other librarians, but sometimes what we're not quite so good is being able to link what we do to what other people do. And I think that for me, um, it's making that visible and, um, in, all of the chapters to do with the secondary um, sector, there's a whole range of things in there that will, will help. Um, there is a chapter on school libraries and I've shared a few resources in there. Um, one of the ones that had the most impact on me was actually developing my information literacy skills framework, which is in the book. Um, what that did for me and why I started it was moving to a new school I thought how can I get my teachers on board with some of the things that I can help them with and uh, I spent a number of of weeks actually writing post-it notes and sticking them up on a big whiteboard in my office which generated a lot of conversation actually it was great um, and so it helped me to show an iterative process to information literacy skills teaching um, but what I did do that I hadn't expected was it actually provided a really valuable tool to help to begin those conversations with teachers um, and, and I think that helped to make it much more visible in my school so definitely that would be something that I would say um, make what you do more visible and and just don't be afraid to talk to people about what it is you do. Sandy can I throw a question that's just arrived in the chat while you were talking um, lots of people talking about how this framework is incredibly useful some people have already bought the book and are using it but here is a question is this is this framework described in more detail in the book how school is working towards a more culturally responsive approach and the framework sounds perfect. Thank you. That's from Wendy Bamba. Right. Um, there's not. I haven't gone into a lot of explanation about the um, the framework that I've 
developed in the book um but it, people are more than welcome to get hold of me and um what i will probably do is i haven't actually blogged about it but i probably will put something up there on the blog so that um, people can get a sense of how they might be able to use it but there certainly are examples of how it can be used through um the chapter i've i've written on school libraries um and the partnerships that i developed with teachers in different ways so i think that will help people to see how i use the framework in that way yeah, great. Thank you, Senga. Catherine, can I come to you? You've worked as a librarian in both the polytech and the university sectors. Do you think librarians, like I keep saying, I sound like I'm saying librarians and my mother would shoot me if she heard that. And really, I promise you, I'm trying to say librarians, but I've got too much lipstick on. Do you think librarians face similar challenges or are they different? And, and how will this book help? Um, I have seen very similar challenges in both. Um, students at whatever institution they're studying at, they need to learn these skills. Um, uh, the challenges I see are probably the teacher librarian collaborations that are based more on relationships. Um, sometimes they do break because one person or from that partnership moves on. So they're quite tenuous. Um, I find convincing academics to build information literacy skill development into their curriculum and assessing it as a challenge, especially when they are so focused on teaching subject content. Um, I know marking research essays is time consuming with large cohorts, and it can be a barrier to effective te teaching of information literacy. But then I do see a lot of dedication from a few who value these skills and they will put in that extra work. And they will offer an, an essay type um, to, to develop those skills in their students. And probably one of the largest challenges is for academics to invite the librarian into the planning stages of their course to allow us to offer input and input in how to teach IL and teach and learn it for teaching yeah. and learning. Um, I also see librarians are not, some of them are not convinced themselves that they are teachers or that they have much to contribute either. Um, but all of these challenges are uncovered in the book. There are many detailed strategies on how some of us have overcome these challenges in our projects. And I think librarians will relate and pick up some new learnings for their teaching practice. Yeah, fantastic, Catherine. Um, Lisa, we keeping, I'm keeping an eye on the questions coming through the chat is there anything there that catches your eye that you would like to respond to mostly it's people saying you're all fabulous and we're raising a glass of wine to you <laughs> that's good that is good um there was a comment um that somebody made quite early on about the are you ready self-assessment rubric and how do we know whether students are assessing themselves accurately and that's a really interesting question because um, we didn't do anything um, that was a kind of an objective evaluation of students' information literacy skills. Um, but the, the rubric is designed in quite a cunning way by Angela um, to where different, different parts of the question, different sections of the rubric can, um, can throw a different light on how students respond to some items. So let me give you an example. Um, most of the students said that they knew how to what plagiarism was and how to avoid it. So that a large number said they were confident in, know, in knowing how to do that. But there were other questions that when they answered those questions, it was clear that they didn't know what plagiarism was or how to how to avoid it. So there are, there are kind of um, mechanisms that allow us to evaluate the, the responses they're giving. Another, another example, a lot of students said that they were confident changing their search strategies um, if the one they were using wasn't working. But we found that most students didn't know about library databases They'd never used Google Scholar or Google Books and didn't know what it was. Um, and there were various other questions and uh, that they didn't know the answers to. And it was like, well, how could you change your search strategy if you don't know any of those things? So one of the nice things about this rubric is the way it's designed to kind of um, give a more holistic picture. Um, 
But also the key thing about the rubric was how it was used by teachers. So what it gave them was an overview of the class and where they thought they were sitting so that the teachers could then target lessons in a, in a, to, to the weaknesses of the class, if you like. Um, so that was an important aspect of the rubric as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Lisa. We're just about out of time. There are a few questions coming through about whether this can be applied to even younger students, primary school age students. Um, is there an answer to that? Well, maybe I could take that one, Michelle. Um, yeah. So so while obviously our research was focused um, on senior secondary and tertiary, because that was what the um, research was about, um, what I can say is that a lot of the stuff in this book, um, particularly the secondary sector one, um, can be adapted to um, primary schools. So a lot of the work that I was doing was around um, year seven and eight students. Um, so I, I put my email in the chat so if anybody's really keen to find out more about it, please do get in touch with me um, because I've got some ideas about how you can quite easily adapt it to your, um, your own uh, year level. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Look, are you, are you beautiful women happy to leave it there? There's most of the chat now is just about how fabulous you are rather than questions that need to be answered. But it's, um, yeah, it's remarkable. And I know that everybody can access very easily in the chat how to buy copies of the book. Oh, we just got a rush of people. Can I just, yes. Can I just remind everybody, because I know people arrived at different times, if you put your name and your email in the um, chat, you could go into the draw to win a copy. Fantastic. Fabulous. Well, we can leave the chat open for a little while. I'm very, look, I've got a very nice cup of tea. I don't have anywhere to be. <laughs> I do want to say, I probably should read it. Well, I could wrap up the formal part of it and leave you all to talk with each other. Um, that's been a really good chat and the feedback is incredibly positive. And I also know that um, Leanza people are quite often the kind of people who, if they see a fish hook in something or they want to um, ask deep questions, they're not shy of doing that. And it's been incredibly positive tonight. So can feel really good about the work that you've done. It's wonderful. So a huge congratulations to the three of you, to Lisa and Senga and Catherine. Job well done. Round of applause. Everybody turn your microphone on and give them a round of applause. <laughs>